we need to create a, a key pair. Uh, and this is how we could, should, uh, when we are creating a machine, we don't know which uh, password that machine will get. But it will insert this key file so that we could connect to it if we just have this file, if we choose to pick that key file. You could, if you had a key pair, you could uh, import it, but we will create one here. Um, I will talk about the uh, key pairs in the security lecture uh, in two weeks. So I, don't, uh, I will not go through what it is right for now, but for now we can use them as keys to open the, the servers, we can say. And this is very important. A key pair has two keys, one public and one private. And you need the private key to be able to open the servers. And you will only, the, the, our cloud doesn't store the private key. This, this key is only for, for you. Uh, so you only have this once to, to download that key. Uh, so we save it. If it doesn't pop up a download, then you just click this link and download that key. After, when we, I exit this page, I won't be able to get this private key again. So it, this is very important that you download this. Otherwise, you have to create a new pair. And if you created machines with the old one, you can't access them anymore if you don't know the password for the machine. So that's really important. After this is done, we have to import the key to our keychain uh, so that we can use it when we're trying to connect to the server. And this varies, of course, between uh, operating systems. Uh, I will show you this in Windows and in uh, OS X. Uh, it will be the same process in uh, Linux uh, as it is in uh, OS X. So we need a bash terminal. And here we have one. Uh, if I just go to uh, list the content of my download. You see here I have that uh, .pem file, which is the private key. Uh, I should move this file and I have to change the, the ownership of this file. Because the key file, uh, suppose, uh, is just for you, for this user. So when you download a file, you, your operating system probably will give this file access to more users than just you. And in OS 10 and in Bash, you can use chmod to change the, the, the own rights and, and specifics of the file. And I will talk about what this means in the security lecture. Uh, so for, for now, just type in the command. What it does is changes the, the, the access right for the file, who can access it. Uh, and it downloads. Um, yeah. And in our home directory, we have a folder called .ssh usually. Oh, maybe we don't have that in the beginning, no. So we have to create that one. And we will move that file to that directory. This is just best practice. Um, to the .sh. And then we have a command which will add this to the SSA, SSH agent. And uh, it is SSH add, and then the key. And now it has been added. So when we are trying to use SSH to connect to a server, if we don't specify a password, it will try to use 
uh, this key to uh, unlock the machine, so to say. And in Windows, I have a virtual box machine of Windows here. A lot of these commands don't exist in Windows. Uh, but if we have git installed, we have the git bash, which is a, not the whole bash, but a part of it. And we can use that one. So we need to, this is a, a newly created machine. Uh, I did it just five minutes before this demo. Uh, so I need to download git. You should be really careful with this file. As you can imagine, this is like your key to your house. But this key could go to all of your servers if you choose to have the same one. So you shouldn't play around with it too much. Uh, let's open the git bash. Uh, here we need to, to, to start this SSH agent first. Uh, Let's see how we did that. Uh, so that need to be started. And then it's actually quite the same process. So we move the file, uh, which should be in our desktop. And then we move it. Oh, yeah, we haven't created that directory yet. So I'm home. I think I am in my home directory. Yes. And then we change the, because when I copy it, it will change the, uh, the permissions for the file. Oops. Yeah. To SSH. And then we use the same command as SSH add. Now we have them on, on both machines. Uh, 